So they're going to very specifically tell you to verify that the intermediate value theorem applies. And then, so that right there, two questions. Verify that it applies and then find the values, value or values of C guaranteed by the theorem. So I think the main part is you conceptually have to understand they're asking you to do the two things. They're asking you to verify. That's one thing. But then they're also asking you to find the values of C. That's the second part. So it's a two part question. Okay. Now, if I'm going to do the verify part, I'm going to do that first. Okay. Let's go ahead and set the problem up over here. Let's say they give me f of x is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 8. And let's say they're looking at it on the interval from 0 to 3. And let's say that they tell you f of c equals 0. Now let's stop and think about that for a minute. I'm trying to find values of c for which f of c equals 0. So I'm trying to find the values of the function where the function crosses the x-axis because I'm setting it equal to zero. What value can I plug in for x or c? What values can I plug into the function when I set it equal to zero that's going to tell me what that number is? Does this have to always be a zero? No. I can put a different number there. Okay, let's visually look at this. If I change that, I don't know, let's say f of c equals some random constant number like 3. f of c equals 3. So then here's the imaginary number 3. And I'm asking for in between this interval and the interval of 3, between 0 and 3, where would the function cross the horizontal line at 3? When I have 0 there, I'm asking for a zero because I'm asking you, where's the function crossing the x-axis in that interval? As soon as I change that number to a different number, it just changes where I'm asking you where the function crosses. Because remember, intermediate value theorem, you've got one that's negative, one that's positive, and we did it to find zeros in pre-calc. When it was negative and when it was positive in a given interval, we knew the only way to do it was to cross the x-axis, so you had to have a root. I don't have to be crossing the x-axis. I could provide you with any horizontal line and want to know if the function crosses that horizontal line. Okay. All right. So let's first of all verify if it works. All right. So first of all, you're going to look at the function. Is it a continuous function? It's a polynomial curve. So you got to tell me, yep, f of x is continuous. Now, not just it's continuous in general, but it's continuous on the given interval. Yes, this one is continuous everywhere, but because the question is only focusing on that interval from 0 to 3, you're going to tell me that. All right, then the next thing to verify that the theorem exists, you would plug in 0, plug in 3, right? So do the arithmetic, get that cranked out, plug in 0, 0, 0 is going to give me 8, because I'm assuming the math's not too bad in your head. And then I'm going to plug in 3. Okay, that one might take a little bit more effort, so 9 minus 18 plus 8 negative 9 plus 8, negative 1. Okay, so I got a positive number and I got a 0 and a negative number. So, so far we're really good, right? Now, let's draw a conclusion from what we've just analyzed. Therefore, since f, and you can say f of x, I don't care whether you use f, f of x, is continuous on that closed interval, and since zero, my k value, my zero right there, is in between negative eight and, or negative one and eight, then I should be good to say the theorem applies. So I'm going to write negative one is less than zero is less than eight. Okay, let's, where did that come from? This is the f of b is less than my k value is less than my a, f of a value. All right, if you're referring back to the theorem, the actual theorem that we wrote down with the notation. All right, so since f is continuous on that and this statement is true, then 
intermediate value theorem applies, and I have it verified. Okay, now, second part, find C. All right, I'm definitely running out of room on my paper. Okay, so now find C. Notice how, what I'm doing. All right, I want you in this habit. When the AP people grade your test, they don't know you. They're not, they don't have hours and hours and hours to ramble all over your paper to find your work. I want your work organized. Help them out. Tell them, hey, right here, I am verifying that this exists. And then give them a heads up. This is like a glaring little, hey, look at me. I am now finding C. So label what you're doing so that when they are grading your paper, they can find things really, really easy. Okay. Now, how do I find C? I take the function. I set it equal to zero or K. So ha if that was some other number, I would set it equal to that number. Okay, it's just by coincidence. So don't always set it equal to zero. Pay attention to what the problem asks for. So um, zero equals x squared minus six x plus eight. We can solve this hopefully by factoring. So x and x, let's see, four and two. And they both need to be negative. That'll give me a positive eight. That gives me a negative six. So this gives me x equals two this one gives me x equals four. Okay, so talk to me. Uh, you're gonna throw out x equals four since you want to find the number of values uh, zero between the intervals. Yeah, since I'm only looking at the interval from zero to three, all right, you gotta throw out four. Now, again, don't make the person read your mind, all right? Cross it out and put not in interval. It's not in the interval. Why are you crossing out? You're crossing out because it's not in the interval. Okay. Now, can I again draw another conclusion? I am clearly running out of room here. Therefore, all right. And I could, I the therefore statement. I have wrote really small ones and I wrote really long ones there before. Therefore, C, since they told me to find values of C, therefore C equals two because, and I could just do a little. Mm, mm, wussy statement like because f of two equals zero or I could make it a little bit better and I could say because f of two equals zero and two is in that closed interval. All right, because we threw out four because it's not in the interval. So we chose two because it is in that interval. All right, because it's in the interval. F of x is continuous, the theorem applies. And when I plug it back in, f of two equals zero. All right, so you had to learn that on your own with an e-learning day. I just wanted to kind of do one in class, talk it through, can really conceptually talk through what are you doing? All right, a big part of, I don't want you just memorizing the steps. I want you to conceptually understand why we're doing what we're doing and where the numbers are coming from, okay? All right, so what am I doing on time? I'm good, I left you about 10 minutes. 